this scale, we have various type of scale. And this is uh, shows separator uh, within one month, how much is scale. And this is the clean separator. And obviously this can cause huge amount of problem. And basically, oil field scale is um, when the solid form in the reservoir, uh, bottom hole, and we want to investigate various type of scale and then before and then find treatment for them. That's our objective. So it is, we call wax as 14 as organic scale, organic solid. But the scale is in, inorganic, yeah? So here, you if you mix BA with SO4, then you form um, barium sulfate. Barium sulfate is, solubility of barium sulfate is very low. Therefore, it can form a scale at the reservoir or anywhere it is mixed. Now, you need to identify which each element is causing and where, what is the cause of a scale. And I will discuss these causes of a scale. There are basically three mechanisms that can result in a scale. One is carbonate scale. This is carbonate scale. Now, rain, we have some CO2 in the, in the, in the atmosphere. Rain will dissolve that CO2 and form carbonic acid. And on the surface of the earth, we have carbonate rock. So this acid will dissolve that rock. And over millions, millions of the year, we have, it will create this cave in the rock. I'm sure you, you know about this. So in the reservoir, in the reservoir, we have some carbonate reservoir, carbonate reservoir, which have been formed in um, coral reef. Coral reef, the, you know, the, living creature there, they, their body is calcium carbonate. When they die, they become the source of carbonate reservoir. And as they go deeper and deeper, then the pressure increase will dissolve more carbonate in the water. So in the reservoir, we have carbonate in equilibrium, equilibrium with um, um, bicarbonate. In, in equilibrium with bicarbonate. Bicarbonate, so we have in the reservoir, we have equilibrium between carbonate and bicarbonate. Bicarbonate, when we produce the oil, we produce the water. And the water comes to the well bowl, 
the water comes to the well bore, what happens as it move upward, the pressure is reduced. Pressure is reduced. So this equation, this uh, equilibrium now has some carbon we result to produce, uh, go this way and produce some carbonate and H2O and bicarbonate. As the pressure drop, CO2 will come out of solution. CO2 will come out of solution and based on Le Chatelier principle, the reaction move in the direction to compensate for this uh, CO2 that has been uh, came out of the uh, water. So reaction move this direction, produce CO2, CO2 go out of solution, but carbonate will remain. So that's result in carbonate escape formation. So what is happen? Anywhere you have a reduction in pressure. Okay. So near well bore, the pressure drop is huge. Inside the well bore is huge. Surface facility. Yeah. And also it has an effect of um, um, temperature. In our kettle, you know, if the water is the hard water, when we boil the kettle, temperature increases, and that results in carbonate scale formation. <clears throat> For carbonate scale, if you want to melt carbonate scale, what you need? Acid. So it's not very complicated. Um, we need to use a mild acid to remove them. That's one source of scale. It's called carbonate scale. The other source of scale is incompatibility of two fluids. Barium sulfate or strontium sulfate or um, calcium sulfate, they can result in a scale formation. Barium, the reason it can uh, result in a scale formation, because we have sulfate ion in the seawater. Sulfur ion, we have seawater, barium, strontium, and calcium are in the formation water. Yeah. They are in the formation water. And when we, but the amount of this uh, ion in the formation water is very little, around 200 ppm. So when we are injecting seawater to the reservoir, at injection well, some scale will form by using the positive ions. And then the, all the positive ions have been um, scaled, then the sulfate move forward move forward, it doesn't have, because you have very small amount of scale, it doesn't have affect the uh, injection well. But when it comes to production well, then you have an infinite supplier of, you have, so this is our, this is our injection well, I'm injecting seawater and the water goes through reservoir and come to the production well. Production well also is producing formation water. 
So formation water has barium, strontium, yeah, and other salt. This sea, this uh, sea uh, water has SO4 minus two. This is barium plus two, strontium plus two. Here you see that there is infinite supply of um, ions. Therefore, near well bore, it forms a lot of a scale because they are mixing. Inside the well bore, they are mixing, yeah? And this is a difficult um, problem. And, um, and it will not uh, is removed by acid injection. And it is difficult to, so we need to use inhibitor. And what they do, they, they say a squeeze treatment. Have you heard of a squeeze treatment? To inject gas, you mean, do you mean? We inject uh, inhibitor, the squeeze. We inject inhibitor and the inhibitor will deposit on surface of the rock and prevent this reaction. And we measure the concentration of inhibitor on the surface. And normally every six months, we have to recharge and do another squeeze treatment. So inhibitor, you first, you have oil here, okay? You first inject, a, a, you know, a, a slug of, of uh, fluid to move the oil back and then inject inhibitor and then another slug to move the inhibitor into the body of reservoir. Yeah, the body of reservoir. And then it start production. And then in, 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 in slowly the inhibitor will be released from surface of the rock and prevent this reaction. But you measure the concentration of inhibitor and when the concentration will drop, then you need to inject more inhibitor. Okay? That is called a squeeze treatment. Another <clears throat> is uh, uh, when we have hydrogen sulfide, uh, some reservoir they have hydrogen sulfide and they can react with iron, zinc and lead and form scale. This is a solid, that's another one. The third mechanism for scale formation is um, brine evaporation. You know, we have, we have two terms in um, solubility, you know, when you mix two fluid together, or three times anyway. Either they are insoluble or they have uh, soluble and or miscible, yeah? So what is soluble and what is miscible? Soluble is when, for example, we, in, we um, we have NaCl. NaCl is soluble in water, but it has a limit. You can dissolve, you can dissolve, oops. You can dissolve up to 26% NaCl 
NaCl in water. Depend on temperature. Higher temperature, you can dissolve more. This is called solubility. So if the concentration of NaCl goes above that, then NaCl does not dissolve and it will be a solid phase, okay? Now, this is solubility. The other one is miscibility. Miscibility, alcohol and water are miscible. Glycol and water are miscible. What does it mean? Means that they, you can have cover between 0% to 100%. That is miscible. Okay? That is called miscibility. If you mix 10% alcohol, 90% is single phase. If you have 20% alcohol, 80% water, miscible. 50-50, miscible. If you have 60% alcohol, 40% water, it's still miscible. That's called miscibility. So solubility and miscibility. Now, if there is competition, this is competition between water molecules, um, between salt and water molecules, and the competition between salt and chemical inhibitor, which is, for example, NAC, uh, NACL is produced by uh, produced water, and you add um, methanol, which, and both the methanol and NACL are, um, their target is to get water molecule to become soluble, okay? Which one will win? Methanol. Because methanol is miscible, NACL is soluble. So if you inject methanol to formation water, you might have salt. The other process, this is in production. Some, some people, they have uh, inject methanol, although their water has a lot of salt. And they solve hydrate problem, but they introduce, um, introduce um, salt problem. Okay, now the other process that can increase the amount of salt in the water is evaporation of the water. What will result in evaporation of water? What can result in evaporation of water is pressure reduction. Pressure reduction can result in evaporation of water. Uh, please, uh, five minutes, I'll come back in five minutes. Recording. Okay, so these are the main um, causes for a scale problem. So, but can be devastating. You can see that reducing the diameter of a pipe. And uh, this is the picture of a scale, uh, high magnification, and uh, it can have other debris. And this is dramatic. And formation damage, because near where bore, we have pressure drop or mixing of the fluid, blockage of perforation or gravel pack, Floor line, safety valve, choke failure, and pump, damage to the pump. <clears throat> it's a big business now. Plug formation, filtration equipment can be, uh, be blocked. And the well in offshore, can be very expensive, 100 million. Interval control valve is for smart wells. 
each of them costs half a million to one million and they can be blocked and uh, you know and um, it's good for inhibitor uh, replacement but they are can be damaged because of a scale, a scale uh, formation rig higher offshore it can be 100 to 700 thousand us dollar and sometimes we need core tubing may require one to do two weeks so you can see that if you have two weeks of 10 days become 7 million yeah cost um so it is very expensive but what we can do one of the technique is to remove sulfate from injection water that I explain later. I think we mentioned in the processing facility uh, by osmesis, okay? And that can be expensive to run as well. In production well, <clears throat> near wellbore, they cause problem in production well, near wellbore area and surface facility, must, must, as I mentioned, we don't have much problem in injection well, because in injection well, the concentration of this compound is, is very low. And they, when they react, they, then the, just the uh, CO4 will pass, sulfate will pass. And there are various techniques to um, solve the scale problem. Um, selection of injection fluid, for example, instead of seawater, can we inject produced water? Because produced wa water doesn't have uh, sulfate. Chemical inhibition, use chemical to inhibit. And using chemical and mechanical uh, remediation that is um, make chemical like um, like uh, using inhibitor mechanical explosion gauge cutter and thing like that we can sound waves we can remove a scale problem uh, another option is flow confirm conformance that is to prevent water approaching production well, okay? So prevent water, there are certain, certain gels that we can inject and block the water uh, source. But here, this figure is very interesting figure. I, I suggest you have a look at this uh, figure. A project has, a well has different life cycle. Here is the beginning of the project. And then here is the plateau production. And then here is the decline. And this is the commission. And the cost of the amount of water with time increases. Initially is formation water. When you have formation water, your problem would be carbonate scale. Then you have seawater. Seawater, the water can be incompatible. And then you have um, barium sulfate, the strontium sulfate is more severe problem. So here explain what type of problem you can have during various stage of the production. So one of op some of the option, <clears throat> as I said, the desulfated de seawater injection, produce water reinjection, squeeze treatment, inhibitor injection, downhole or injection water, and dissolver injection. That's for solving if there is a blockage 
solving that problem. And there are some other techniques here, uh, milling, like urining, jetting, high pressure water uh, or the solid, uh, oscillation, yeah? explosive, uh, acoustic waves, and um, tractor mill, you know, brushes and that can remove the scale from inside. <clears throat> okay, any question on conventional scale? So the third type of scale was um, the halite, halite solubility. NaCl, KCl, CaCl2, they are called halite. The reason they call halite because they form a scale with halogen. Halogen from periodic table, they have seven um, electron in the outer layer. So Cl has the same, Na is, uh, Br is the same, uh, you know, other uh, component in periodic table and seven column is called halide. Uh, fluorine is the same. So they um, called halide, but majority of this halide that cause problem for us in NACL, CACL2, KCL. And <clears throat> they can form a scale by water evaporation. Yeah? When the fluid comes from high pressure to low pressure, pressure drop, water will evaporate. Um, then temperature change. Reduction in temperature reduces solubility. Pressure change. Yeah? Pressure change can result in solubility uh, limit. And solubility change when we add another, for example, alcohol to the system, that will change the solubility of NaCl. Uh, they can block the formation, well bore, tubing, and can, can damage surface facilities. <clears throat> so, halite and halite control, it happens in low pressure or high temperature reservoir. Because low pressure, the solubility of water is a function, is a function of pressure, temperature, salinity and composition of the gas. So the higher the pressure, more water goes to the gas phase. Uh, sorry, the other way around. The higher the temperature, more water goes to the gas phase. The lower the pressure, more water goes to the gas phase. Salinity reduces the amount of water that can go to the gas phase because it will reduce the um, activity of water. And other component compared to um, uh, methane, they can increase the amount of water going to the gas phase. For example, component like H2S can increase the amount of water going to the gas phase. So when the, this water is going to gas phase, we increase the concentration of this halide and they can result in uh, halide formation that can block the system. Um, you know, the turbine, especially for gas compression, they can have problem with halide deposition. Now, you know that in many countries, we use gas storage. And gas storage, when we have um, high supply and we cannot use all the supply, we can use some, um, we can use some um, gas during the high supply and uh, save it for 
uh, time that the, we don't have enough gas in the system. For example, if you are importing, uh, using gas for a city, um, you know, uh, heat requirement, then during the uh, summer, you need less gas. During winter, you need more gas. So how you are going to cope with this variation in the amount of gas you require. One op option is that to design the pipeline and facility based on maximum gas requirement. So you, you want to transfer gas from, for example, from, I don't know, from um, Russia. I don't know where you get your gas supply. Uh, then you need a bigger pipeline. Another option is that during you design your pipeline on the average gas requirement. So a smaller pipeline. And then during summertime that you need less gas, store the gas in salt cavern, yeah? And deplete the reservoir. And then during winter that you need more gas, open this um, reservoir and get some of the gas that you store uh, for use it in the, your network. But the, the gas, original gas is dehydrated. We have removed the water uh, to, to a certain level. When we inject to the salt cavern or inject to the depleted reservoir, it can evaporate the evaporate the water again. Yeah. And therefore the gas you are producing will have more water. So first the gas needs to be treat, treated. And also that evaporation of the water in the depleted reservoir will create increase the concentration of the salt in that water and the salt may deposit inside the formation reduce permeability. So this is a problem that countries like um, Germany that they have gas storage, they have that problem. You see that this is, um, is a case I mentioned to you and um, here in the, uh, in the tubing that they are producing salty water, but at the same time they are injecting, uh, injecting the methanol and therefore salt is coming out of solution, okay? And uh, this is uh, very, we have to be um, very careful uh, to make sure that if you want to prevent hydrate formation, you don't end up with a, a scale formation. <clears throat> okay. Uh, they can form in the production tubing. Uh, the mechanism is that the produced water are cold and depressurized, and then that can result in uh, evaporation because the pressure reduction, evaporation of water from produced water, and then uh, we result in concentration of increasing concentration of salt and result in uh, in, in wax, uh, sorry, uh, in uh, halite deposition. They can form in the surface facility. They can form in the pipeline, you know, alcohol, in, why do we inject alcohol? Because hydrate prevention. And then because alcohol is miscible, salt is soluble, and therefore salt will come out of solution. Hey, light will be cold. Yes. Uh, and these problems uh, occurs uh, usually in uh, structures uh, such as domes, for example, oh, and for uh, very salty waters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you have salty oh. water, 
it can happen near wellbore because the pressure drop near wellbore. And if you reduce pressure, more gas, more water goes to the gas phase. Uh, what so. I meant, it was um, geologically speaking, uh, that uh, these problems, it's, it's a major occurrence. It is uh, in... Um, oh, yes, from I reservoir viewpoint. In, uh, from, yeah, from reservoir viewpoint, we have, uh, you know, for example, um, for example, in um, Brazil, we have a pretty salt reservoir, okay? You know that Brazil was part of Africa, okay? Brazil was attached to Africa. Did you know that or not? Uh, yes, because the continents were uh, yes. somehow in the past. Uh... Yes, they were attached to each other and then, um, the depression, depression happened when I mean, they were separating from each other. Then there was a, uh, a depression happened. Then when depression happened, all the water goes to that depression. And that water is a sweet water. Yeah, it's not salty water. Okay, because it's coming from rain. And then when they separate a bit more, then salty water come in. Okay, now that fresh water can form a reservoir in fresh water. Then salty water comes in. Salty water, initially the amount is small. When the amount of is small, then evaporate and leave the salt. So it is, may not look a lot, one centimeter per year, but we are talking about 50 million. So it can be five kilometers as it is in Brazil, okay? Therefore, you have a layer of salt. And then, then the conventional deposition, you know, but this is now salty water, and then you have um, sedimentation and form another reservoir, okay? Now, so you have at the top, you have um, conventional sediment. In the middle, you have salt, four kilometer salt. Now, salt density is less than um, soil density. Density of salt is far less than the density of soil. So it can, if it was like a bubble, wants to move upward. And that will create domes, salt domes. And that salt domes can result as a good uh, impermeable layer for reservoir because salt is not good permeability, has not good permeability. Okay, did I manage to explain? Yes, thank you. So, yeah, for the good point about halide that if it dissolve in water, so we can uh, remove them by adding water and uh, to the uh, to the well, injecting water and dissolving uh, saline. <clears throat> okay. Any comment, question? Okay, do you need a rest or you are okay? We have, no, we don't have enough time. Huh? We have uh, nine minutes time. So foam, foam is a layer of liquid and gas inside them. And they form a network that because the lighter can be on the top of liquid and the gas. And therefore that will cause problem for separation. So the 
the foam, we need to reduce the amount of foam and, you know, by, by reducing surfactant. So anything that has soap um, characteristic, they can result in surfactant being there. There is some uh, surfactant in the system. So the foam, the amount of foam, the height of the whole foam, and how quickly they will decompose, they basically is a major um, measurement. Yeah. So the gravity is basically the uh, control factor. And then you have pressure difference between uh, you know, plateau and uh, gas diffusion between bubbles. So they all affect the form formation. If we forget about all the theory, we, this is the form test we do. So we create an injection, uh, normally air or nitrogen. If you have uh, hydrocarbon, you we prefer to inject nitrogen and then and then the form forms and then we look at the the level of form and then um, see that how long will it take for uh, the form to settle and if necessary we inject some chemical to see how we that, that affect the form formation this is the setup you see that here, this is the diffuser that the gas comes from here. And this is a temperature control and thermometer, air. Yeah, here we're injecting air and rubber stop and gas flowmeter at different rate. And then um, we can conduct the test and see the effectiveness of deformers. And this is some of the result uh, effect of chemical on the form formation. You see that you start the test, the volume of foam and the level of the foam, and then turn, up, turn off to see how quickly the foam level is uh, dropping down. And that will help in designing the separation time yeah you remember each separator we have uh, uh, optimum uh, time 